past, future, within, outside, past, 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 past. I'm more interested in is this link between culture and technology and the nature of technology itself and how that influences our lived realities. Like why I keep coming back to technology um, apart from the sort of idea level and, and the connections that I make between um, tech and other larger ideas that I'm researching is also because tech allows for a certain kind of uh, interaction where you know you can click you can scan you can scroll you can spin and, and and so there's always room to read more and to say more and to really like deep dive and explore and because a lot of my work is so research heavy and I kind of really enjoy that potential of findings to open out ways of seeing things, right? Um, so I want that research to be in the work. And, um, and, and only because I use technology, I'm able to make that work so participatory and generative and interactive. And, and I also would like to leave my work online. So, you know, it's, it's, it has a life outside of the gallery because it requires revisits. It requires staying longer. It, it, you know, it requires like suddenly having a thought one day and be like, hey, let me go see what did I see that? What did that say about it? You know, so I like to allow my work to have a life online uh, for those kind of like repeat visits and longer engagements. Um, to be able to write a program or to code or whatever, it requires a certain kind of like, I don't know, hi uh, hyper awareness of the way the mind functions. Because what you're trying to do is really break down the functionality of the mind and then sort of recreate a machine to think in that way, right? And the kind of awareness that bring that that requires something so fantastic, like um, uh, when I was reading these, uh, for, what are the first books that women published? You know, uh, women, the first writings by women were self-published, how good housekeeping tips and tricks, small pamphlets and booklets that they would kind of publish by themselves and circulate. Um, and they would be like, okay, very specific things. These are not, you know, they're not like, oh, anyone can keep house. What do you do? I'm nothing. I'm a homemaker. No, if you read those books, you'd be like, wow, this is a science because they'd be like, this temperature pay if you keep rice with this thing, then the grains will separate. And like, if you do this thing with this thing. And so there were these like whole series of things. And I was kind of reading them with Pratmesh and he's like, listen, this is literally a program it's you know this function like you have to change the dishwashing soap every once in a month you have to do that so some functions are looping some functions are like if then but if not false you know so the whole thing then we ended up together writing it as like a code poem where we started writing program versions of domestic tasks right and so to kind of see the world in that way and and to kind of interact with human emotion, human desires, and the functionality of the brain. I think that's quite a special thing that programmers are able to do. What form could that could allow for this, uh, this sort of exploration, you know? So the idea of the form very much comes from the intent of what it is that you want to say in the work. Um, so while I was kind of grappling with this in the archive, which was in Calcutta, I encountered these Patachitra paintings, the, the scroll uh, paintings, which I'm sure many people are familiar with. And really looking at those scroll paintings, the logic is, you know, top to bottom, your eye moves um, across the screen in this way, I mean, across the scroll in this way. And you kind of open out the scroll as more and more is revealed to you. And it really reminded me of the logic of a website where, you know, a website is again, that's the way your eye moves across the screen and you physically scroll with your mouse to kind of reveal further bottom parts of the story. And I felt like, hey, you know what? This is a form that makes sense to tell the story. So it's also, you know, kind of looking at connections between 
contemporary digital languages and also existing visual cultures that exist um like older older forms in visual cultures and kind of trying to see how they tie up to each other um so in the same work again some of these patachitras would have these little flaps and you could open the flap and inside the flap would be you know like the more naughty part of the work or the punch line would be within a small flap and you open the patachitra and see it and that again reminded me of this like pop up like a click on your screen and then you reveal you know another sort of background information or the second part of something that you're already seeing on a first plane uh, so then that feature kind of became part of the work and so sultana's reality then is a sort of interactive scroll like website which has a lot of different explorations that you can take which has fiction as well as fact which has archival material which has people's testimonies and a lot of this comes together um because the form allowed for it you know um so um and and also another thing i wanted to share about about this work and how sort of the idea of technology kind of made uh, its way into the work uh was the fact that you know again when i was researching about the women's reform movement um i was looking at so many ways in which it was kind of imposed and and how women's agency really had no uh, space within that move, within the reform movement uh and wasn't really something that was considered and then the ways in which women resisted that um and it started reminding me of you know an app where you i mean we all have kind of experienced this you have a new app or an update or something and you have to agree to the terms and conditions whether you like it or not and then sometimes the app is just like quite terrible and the update's not working and you know it's full of bugs and then your system keeps hanging as if it's in mutiny so i was imagining the women's reform movement to really be like an app that is imposed on you um where 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 you know uh, it's not working the ways in which the errors are being reported and the bugs are kind of coming out in terms of women's experiences um and actions of resistance within that reform movement um so 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 using these kind of like uh, lenses to equate moments in history um and, and like contemporary digital experiences is something that i feel uh, helps me make sense of these things and then with extension a lot of people like i said from my generation who are so seeped into digital culture to also make sense of older broader historical sociological anthropological ideas through this lived interaction with with the digital you know um so i think while my work is um often talks about technology and it does use technology as well i think what i'm more interested in is this link between uh culture and technology and 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 the nature of technology itself and how that influences our lived realities you know so there's this like i mean i'm i'm also a student of media studies and we like learn you know theory by marshall mcluhan he talks about how like technology is an extension of the body and i think i would go like one step forward to agree but also say technology is also an extension of our desires of our dreams of of our fantasies so um like i don't program but i'm deeply interested in programming and code and i kind of try to keep myself abreast of you know the possibilities within that and what's going on in that world and i have friends who are programmers who i love to chat with about things like this and i sometimes really feel like coders are so poetic you know because you have these really core human impulses that are translated into like buttons like you have on your keyboard an escape button you have a control button you have a space button what do these ideas really mean like how are we utilizing them but also what are the larger conceptual human um desires that they reflect you know and, and so thinking about ideas like this in terms of technology is very juicy for me when sultana's reality show in kochi the 90% of my messages came from young college boys who were gamers right like they liked to play video games they walked into that room and they felt like oh video game vibe let's see what's happening and then they like read about feminist history and they stayed on to read about it and what are the conditions for these young boys actually want to educate themselves about feminist history uh, so to make work that's like not only just like accessible i think the popular is great because it's not being 
ex- like it's not excluding a whole bunch of people but it's like yes everybody come in i'm popular i'm embracing this thing and i think that's great uh, so but how to not dilute what you want to say in the act of doing that that's something that's like kind of a fine balance which i keep introspecting on while i work you know and when i was looking at cross stitch uh, which like really young girls did you know inside their house like these little cross stitch samplers which a lot of us also did as needlework in school and you know whatever uh, it's a very like iconic thing that young girls did and and looking at that cross stitch again and again in the archive i was like man this looks just like you know the early pixel graphics right like your super mario games or your early digital pixel imagery the logic of that is the dot make matrix which is not very different from the logic of constructing a cross stitch image where every pixel is a cross so i started thinking about that and i was like that's so interesting because um you know you look at a lot of the work that women do at home with their hands as like like decorative craft sort of work as like cute unimportant unskilled work but maybe there are larger and more interesting potentials and connections within that work so apart from like cross stitch i was also looking at weaving and and crochet and knitting and other such things and and you know like like these things if you what i mean i've witnessed so many women aunts teachers all of these doing this sort of knitting thing my neighbors they're watching tv they're talking to each other and then suddenly under their breath they'll say four five six and then they'll continue and they make it look so simple but actually these are really kind of like complex mathematical calculations happening in their mind while they multitask you know and they're kind of building these works that have a lot of programming logic to it again um and so while i was kind of thinking about this i also found out about how um the difference engine uh, which was the first computer right made by babbage uh the program for that was written by ada lovelace a woman and um the she was inspired by the jacquard loom like the weaving loom which again has this 1010 binary logic um so you kind of see a lot more connections and you start seeing this whole other potential to these these works and the knowledge and information and intelligence that goes be- behind doing these sort of works um and, and and then you know a lot of that also got me thinking about how women really are living in code because well you see uh, you know something that's been embroidered and that's sort of the image that you see but when you turn around you can really see the back end of that and that's exactly how a software is designed right like you as a user are, uh, the interface is something that you are interacting with but there is a whole back end of knots and stitches and overlaps of that software which actually show you how it was created or how it works so where you have to go in if you want to change something um so i feel like maybe actually a lot of the stuff that we 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 use now on the internet and with programs and with our computers maybe that's when they were dreamt up um so that speculation is what i'm playing with in this work um um and what i ended up making was this kind of large uh, qr code um and and you know like qr codes are made up of pixels but here every pixel was um an image of a woman doing a different domestic work and then that qr code could be scanned and you get the sort of like clue or code or whatever in your phone and then within that large qr code there were also there was a video work which is where you know a little girl from a cross stitch embroidery kind of comes alive and goes into this very super mario like a uh, world of uh, embroidery video game um and then there are also other codes that you can scan um and and reveal sort of different moments and and learnings and facts and um you know speculations around these connections to programming and domestic labor but if you're close minded a miraculous day appear before your eyes and if you close your eyes i'll appear in your dreams looking at all of these different imaginations of uh, mother mary outside of <clears throat> like her overarching imagery that at least i grew up with through you know my convent school and other kind of upbringing uh, of you know mother berry being this sort of very gentle and virginal and eternally patient forgiving white woman um and and only later like through you know kind of opening your blinkers out a bit i kind of 
encountered so many different imaginations of her of course in the indian subcontinent as well as various other parts of the world where especially where christianity and colonization were, were closely interlinked you know and you look at such fantastic ways in which she's been reimagined not only in terms of the body or the name and the title and her attributes but also stories associated to her miracles associated to her customs and rituals that are associated to her and they keep shifting as you move across time and i felt like all of these feel like somewhat they 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 different people but they all also mother mary and and it's not a fixed process every day there is a new apparition or there is a new person that she appears to in a dream somewhere and then a new myth created with her and the new title is born and so it's this large ever evolving ecosystem and so i really wanted to create a work that uh, that becomes a container for all of those um and which is why the work is called our lady if i can be anything you want me to because that's literally the way i feel um you know the potential of that marian figure has been reinterpreted by all of her communities across the world um so then what i and and you know initially i wanted to make it into a bot uh, but of course after a lot of time i realized to make um a, a somewhat intelligent bot is an extremely expensive i uh, think to do and i didn't want to make one of these irritating chat bots that are just kind of you know blurting out very pre-programmed statements so it is still imagined as a bot although it's not really a bot um of a figure a, a marian figure who's just a shell a container she so she's made up of all of these multitude pixels and inside each pixel you can kind of see a different imagination or a different version of her that exists and you can also add on your own imagination or your own desire of what you like her to be or your own very special encounter that you've had that ha- that is not included in this body of the marian figure and so the pixels will keep changing and as the work um is shown more and is interacted with more uh, the older ones keep kind of getting replaced and 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 you know they keep kind of refreshing themselves so that is not a a fixed image of figure which is exactly how i felt about the the marian figure as i was researching with her um but but you know that that work has kind of led and, and although this is where the journey of that work ends but that has kind of led me um off late to think a lot about um like what are the connections between this like mother goddess and the mother board are there connections between these and what are those connections and i'm kind of trying to um and, and perhaps this would be something i explore in future work but of late i'm spending a lot of time like reading and thinking about like the connections between the divine and artificial intelligence you know and and like we have you know deep learning and and neural networks that we talk about uh, which is you know the direction in which now our digital explorations are going uh, but you see these logics also in the natural world you know like you see um mushrooms having this mycelium network which is you know a, an information super highway that's more complicated than the internet itself or you have ant hills having these like very complex <clears throat> systems of communication underground into the forest so i'm kind of interested in how how has the internet been influenced by the natural world how do they kind of speak to each other and i think that's something that i'm i i see myself kind of exploring a little bit more um in the future as i go according to the book of genesis god created the human form in the image of himself and then made it come alive by blowing into it his own breath no wonder humans have inherited tendencies of the divine desperate to connect with their maker but also desperate to be the maker what then is the difference between the human and the divine and the human and the ai and the ai and the divine there have been times where i'm actually it's not about the technology at all it is just the fact that the technology allows for you to say the things that you want to say in a certain way uh, which is what happens in the mother mary work it's not so much the fact that uh, you know like the technology doesn't have a voice in that work it's literally just your medium right um but then in other places the tech becomes a part of the conversation and so it's not only a tool but it's also a character in the work itself I will speak in your tongue and I will wear your clothes. I will be anything you want me to. Be. 